start off with a Kieran McGeary quote. I think he was channeling his inner Conor McGregor with this kind of catchy slogan after uh, after the win. They said that we wouldn't. They said that we couldn't. But I tell you what, we did, Colin Cavanagh. They did. And look, to be honest with you, the performance reminded me of the, the Naughties teams. Let's be honest. It was Tyrone against Kerry. It was in your face. It was, you know, bodies on the line. It was a real Tyrone performance. And, you know, it is since 2008, since the beat of Kerry, Mayo or Dublin. So, like, I mean, you can't underestimate how big a win this was. Yeah, look, uh, the, 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 there's no doubt. Uh, look, massive underdogs got in. Now, personally, didn't feel that they deserved that in terms of what they'd done to date. But uh, something stood out for me at the weekend, and it was that work rate, and it was that desire. It's been probably mentioned plenty of times over the weekend that how hard Jerome worked and threw themselves at everything. And yeah, I, I said a few weeks back that they've just looked to be playing a bit more freer, a bit more without fear. Um, and look, it was by no means a, a perfect performance. There was a lot of mistakes. There was a lot of things that didn't go go well for them. And you know, things could have been different, but by God, they they give uh, honest endeavour and effort and, you know, ultimately get the reward for it. So, um, I'm just look, such a great game to watch, such a, such a, probably something that's caught me. I've never actually watched a game like that uh, in, a, in a long time and really get that engrossed in it. So, look, a, a fantastic win for Tyrone, but uh, as I say, look, effort and endeavour but uh, look, they'll know there are things to improve on as well Yeah like I mean I've said on the so- show so many times Alan like I mean Tyrone dropping off teams goes against everything Tyrone stand for their psyche you know fr- from that team of the noughties that was in your face that was not giving teams time to breed you played with them and off times it felt watching Tyrone that we'd gone back 10 years didn't it like I mean the way they were defending heroically putting pressure on Kerry everywhere you know it, there, there was that kind of feel about it yeah, it did. And I think compared to Toronto a couple of years ago, when their when when their defensive structure was very systematic. Yesterday, it looked like we're just going to hunt down Kerry wherever they go, wherever they want to play, we'll go and hunt them down. And they just didn't give Kerry a second to breathe on it. And Kerry looked bizarrely looked a little shell shocked by it. They just couldn't handle the intensity that that Toronto brought. And you could see the amount of turnovers, the mistakes, then the Kerry that that Kerry started to make even when they weren't being tackled because they were, they were just feeling that pressure all over the field. And, and in fairness to Toronto, as, like, like as Colm said, Kerry still could have won the match. I thought Toronto got a couple of for, for, fortunistic goals, um, particularly Conor McKenna's one was probably a lucky enough break that they got. But, but they rode their luck at time with a couple of goal chances Kerry had. But in fairness to Toronto, they showed serious endeavour for a work rate, serious endeavour to go and hunt Kerry down wherever they are. And they got their rewards for that. They came out, they were brave, they pushed up on Kerry and they got their rewards for it. And, and like in the end, it would be hard to argue against the... Uh, against her own deserving to win the match. Yeah, so like, I mean, Fergal Logan and Brian Doher deserve an awful lot of credit for this column. Like, I mean, they've transformed Tyrone from that dropping off. Now, okay, there was times yesterday, especially in extra time, where Tyrone dropped off and they, they played a counter-attack football almost like Mickey Hart. But like in the first half, when there was no black cards, this was, you know, this was a Tyrone from a 10 years ago. It was, you know, Mark and Tyrone or Kerry tight all over the field, putting pressure on them, even in the opposition's half. Poor Kerry, like, you know, couldn't get their kick pass going because they were under pressure and they're you know Tyrone at the back were marking so tight and we know what teams are like now they won't kick it unless it's a perfect kick pass so Kerry were kind of running everything Tyrone loved it Kerry ran out of ideas up front like I mean when you look at Brian Dewar and Fergal Logan they deserve an awful lot of credit for this like I mean Tyrone to be honest had stagnated let's be honest and a lot of people were saying wish you know be careful what you wish for a lot of you know Mickey Hart would have had his supporters but Mickey Hart team wouldn't have beaten that Kerry team yesterday. Like Fergal Logan and Brian Doer team won it. Yeah, look, that's, that's definitely a fair point. And looking back over the last number of years, I say we have we always set up in a way of nearly that structure, uh, you know, and we had, we had a very very rigid type of football the way we were playing, and we didn't really know anything else. So I, I knew a brand Fergal coming in this year that they had to do something different. They knew they had to do something different. We hadn't beat to say Kerry or Mayo or Dublin or any of these big teams in 2008, so it's a long time coming. Um, they, they, I did say that they, they were playing without fear. They were going at, t- they were taking chances, of course. Um, Kerry had goal chances. Okay, didn't convert, but Tyrone knew that if they were going to win this game, they had to go. They have, they have, they've had uh, serious forwards in that, and obviously you want guys starting and coming off the bench. So 
they knew going into that game that if uh, if they can put up the scores, they were gonna you know they're obviously gonna leak stuff at the back. But um, you know, it's just the intensity and the effort that that they give. I I, I don't think I've seen it. I haven't seen it. I haven't been part of a own team uh, probably from them early days. Um, you know to see to see how they've uh, see how they've done that. So like a lot of credit has to go to Fergal and Brand because. It's ultimately a risk uh, what they've done because you know that team and a lot of them players played under Mickey and Gavin and stuff and you like you nearly become set in your ways and how you're playing football. So to, to be able to transform, not totally obviously they, they did revert back when the black cards happened on near yeah. the end. Maybe they play a counter attacking football and it actually worked to their advantage because they could have you know they could have got a lot more scores probably um, because you know because Kerry were struggling to break them down. They were sort of you know going laterally and when Clifford went off, obviously the. They, 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 they struggle even further. So, look, massive, uh, massive credit to the two lads. Like they, 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 t- they took a risk uh, slightly. You know, we, we talked in the show months back that Tyrone needed to change their style, and you know, they, they haven't had an awful lot to work with. They haven't been, you know, they've, they've a short period of time to do that, and they've done it fairly well. Yeah, their kicking game now is still fairly suspect. They didn't get too much off that. They did better at the running game. What's the dynamic, Colin, between um, Dewar and Logan? I, I, I just saw an interesting quote from Fergal saying that he was talking about the substitutions. He says, that's that's Brian's job, really. If you win the substitutions, are brilliant. If you lose the other way, they had an impact. Derek Hanavan puts a fizz in it uh, when he gets on. I was surprised that Fergal Logan, I thought Fergal Logan was the manager and Brian Dewar was kind of, you know, maybe a system manager. Is a giant? Is it a, it's very unusual Fergal Logan has no input into the subs. I'm not sure that's the case now, but the the did I suppose announce that they are joint managers as such, and I, I don't actually know. I, mean, I have no insight knowledge on that, but I would suspect that the lads, the way knowing Fergal and Brian and know the way they operate, I'd say they were getting a they were getting a bit of a steer from all the backroom team. Nearly, I would imagine. You know, you have Peter Donnelly there, you have Joe McMahon, you have a lot of lads who've played football at that level, and you know knows who to you know. Obviously, a fairly good football and brain, and will know who to throw on and what scenario. Like because there was changes in the twenty six uh, for that game. There was guys that like for like Sanal Kelly played I think the Ulster final and then didn't get into twenty six at the weekend there. So they they've, they've made some bold calls. Um, and uh, you know obviously you have your mainstays that are coming off with Canavan and and McShane and whatnot. But um, yeah, I find that fairly strange to see. Well, I would imagine there's some sort of input there, but like I suppose Brand's probably leading it. Yeah, he definitely is. What about Tommy Walsh at the end, um, Alan? Like, I mean, hindsight is great. And you'd say he did get the step on McNamee. If he'd straightened up there, he yeah. might have been taken down. Because Tommy hadn't had a good game. And I, like when I was seeing him winding up for a shot, I was like, this is not going Yeah, over. no, I thought it was a bad option. Now, he was coming around. Like, you want to get your top shooters. At that stage of the game, an experienced guy like him. We know what Tommy Walsh is good at. Kicking scores from 30, 35 yards probably isn't as... Probably isn't his strength. Um, Sean O'Shea had come around the outside of him. Yeah, I was the same as you. When I saw him kick it, I was like, "This, he's under too much pressure." There. He only had a half a yard, and I would have like it would have been a brilliant score. So I thought at that stage of the game, he should have maybe looked for another pass. Like the ref probably would have let them would have let them play away for another few seconds, and it just showed a little bit of lack of composure. And I think if you looked at Tyrone, how they played, say particularly in the second half and part of extra time, like they showed a lot of composure up front. I thought, like you talk about, you know what you're going to get from a Brian Dewar team. You're going to get that intensity in the tackle, and we saw that. But I thought up front they were really composed. They moved it around by the hand, and they they worked some lovely scores, and they looked a lot more comfortable in that in that sort of tight game. Than the Kerry players did, bar maybe Clifford. Like when Kerry got the ball, I thought they looked very panicked. Yeah, like, as you said, they couldn't get their kick passing game going. Whereas I thought Tyrone were kind of playing it on their terms for a lot of the for a lot of the game. And look, like we said before the show, like I still think I don't think there's any need to panic in Kerry. They may need, they may need to change in management, but they still have an exceptional group of players there. Like Tom O'Sullivan, a cornerback, sn- snuffed out McCurry, who was. He was in brilliant form in the few games leading up to. He couldn't get a, he couldn't get a kick until he started to get a bit of space. He got a couple of scores at the end, but um, Jason Foley did quite well as well up front until until he got hurt and he was under pressure an extra time. So I wouldn't panic. I wouldn't panic from Kerry. I think they can come back. They might need to change a manager, but um, I just thought Tyrone showed a lot more composure up front when he had the ball and that chance that Tommy Walsh had confirmed after me. I thought he was. He was probably wrong to shoot that at that stage. That was the thing. And like he, Alan's right, Colin, I think the referee would have, Goldrick would have given them 
mo- plenty of time because he was so pissed off with Ben McDonald for that black card when he picked up the Kerry <laughs> pair, threw him on the ground. And then hilariously, he was sent off. The ref didn't even stop. I never saw that happen before. The ref sent him off without stopping the play. He was like, let's get you up here and get this equaliser and we'll all have penalties. And there was that feel about it. And then uh, when Ben was going off the pitch, he tried to grab, grab and Crow- Crowley by <laughs> and pull him down when he was... Uh, when he was like, So for that reason, I think that the referee would have given Kerry a chance to get a shot off. Yeah, uh, from a throne perspective, I was glad to see Tommy Walsh obviously take that shot because I knew as soon as he was trying to outrun the loop that that's a... That's a very, very tough kick, you know, coming at pace, trying to get a stab on somebody with McNamee or whoever it was, yeah. bearing down on him. Um, I thought if they had been cute about it, like I know Colder could let the game go fairly, you know, he refereed the game fairly well, he had let things go, he had let tackles to come in. But if, if Kerry had been a bit cuter and tried to work it in the either get to Sean O'Shea or some of the guys on the on the ball to, to finish it, or like Steve O'Brien, for example, or some of them guys who can just get a, get a, get a yard in front, get a step in front, and I would say it wouldn't have took very much for Colder to give a, to give a free to, to to level the game up. Like he nearly wanted uh, to do that, I would, I would feel because it was harsh. Like don't get me wrong, you know, Kerry had Kerry had, had a great comeback when they went five down, and you know, it, it, it sort of felt a bit harsh at the end just to, to finish it like that. But uh, obviously, from Trump's perspective, uh, I, I can't complain. But yeah, like a, a more composed. Uh, forward unit would have worked that round up for Dublin, for example, would have been working that round, working that round, waiting for the either the shooter to get into the right space or ultimately try and get a free. It, it, yeah, the bar. It, 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 it's a difficult one, really, because it was a Derry we saw this year run down the clock on themselves, so you can overdo it in that scenario. Do you know what I mean? So, like from Tommy Walsh's point of view, this a lot of this can be hindsight stuff. I, uh, for me, I think he should have straightened up and maybe yeah. drew the foul himself rather than because it was Derry that, that overdid it and then didn't get a shot off at all and we were mad critical of them yeah, and I think I think it was a little bit different in the Derry game they never really tried to even make a breakthrough whereas I think Kerry were trying to were trying to punch holes at that stage and you're right if he'd have straightened up the shoulder a little bit and went that he might have drawn a free but certainly I think at that stage of the game I think you would have rather well Clifford was gone at that stage but you, you would have rather a Sean O'Shea or someone on or just get it in a bit closer like with the like with the pressure that's say the Tyrone full back line, the half back line, we're putting on the shooters like we spoke. We saw Gainey miss one under a bit of pressure on his left foot too, balloon it wide into Hill 16. Yeah. So there was a lot of pressure on the forward. So you need to, at that stage of the game, you just needed a bit of composure to make sure you could at least get a proper strike on it. And look, he didn't even get a proper strike on it. I think it dropped short. Yeah, talk, talk, talk about lack of composure, yeah. um, Alan. You've mentioned this already. Jack Barry for the McKenna goal. What was he doing? Now, what is he doing? Seriously. Now, if this was a wing back like Paul Murphy who's crap under a high ball, this is a midfielder. High balls are his bread and butter. He, he lost it in the air, right? And then he turned around. How is he not catching? You're meant to trust a midfielder in that situation. You're meant to have full trust like a Darrow Shea at 45 and you're out the field going, he'll catch this. This is, you know, and then you're like, geez, he's catching it even over the crossbar. You've trust your midfielders in those stars. He kicked it straight to yeah. McKenna. I think, I think looking at, with all respect to Jack Barry, he's not Darrow Shea, but um, when I saw it first, I thought like he was grappling with the defender. I thought he got pulled back. Not a little that bit. much grappling. Maybe though. he lost it a bit in the sun. I don't know. It was a bit strange. But I, like, like when I saw it first, I thought there's no way this is going to land straight. Like there was Kerry backs around there, and the Conor McKenna on their own on the edge of the. Uh, like, I thought the other defender should have been covering that off a little bit better. Like, uh, like at that stage of the game, the Kerry defender should have been coming back to protect that high ball breaking, and they weren't. There was a yeah. lot of them standing, and Conor McKenna was the one that that. that that kind of anticipated maybe getting into a position where it might break to him and it landed perfectly for him. So it, it wasn't great from Jack Barry. Maybe again a little bit of composure, but I thought the other carry defenders didn't didn't give him any help at all in, in kind of covering that space. Like 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 oh, as, who kicks the ball back? In, who kicks the ball back into the feckin', into the, <laughs> the danger place like that? Who you're better off let it shadow it out wide. No, it was I, uh, it was a McGeary like, kick that it would have been a it would have been a wide ball. But if you. Who on earth kicks it back into well, in front of your own goal? Whoever he was jostling with would have blocked it and knocked it back in. I'd say anyway, but but it yeah. like like the first like as a full back or a half back, we always spoke. But the ball goes over your head, you turn and you get back for a break or to see what happens. And the carry defenders didn't do it, and it wasn't the first time in the game they didn't do it. I thought that 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 they're tracking the runs, they're getting back to face the play as the thrown attackers were coming in was very poor right throughout. And 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 like like for me, have a known Tyrone, like you know how they're going to play. Um, they're a very good football team but you could have set up like we didn't see anything from Tyrone yesterday that we wouldn't have expected so I thought the way Kerry set up and, and that kind of moment um, 
summarises it for me another moment in the game McKenna's first goal actually David Moran was getting back but but he only trotted back he never really tried to get back into cover space and if he'd have, if he'd have put a 20 yard sprint in he would have covered McKenna as um, I think Sludden came in one from the left was it and gave the hand pass to McKenna so I thought right throughout that game I thought Kerry were poor just in filling those gaps in front of their goal Yeah, paid true. a heavy price for it Callum you were coming in there uh, yeah the goals like all of them probably nearly I could argue that defending from Kerry would like was very very poor uh, because it, obviously I've worked on this for a lot. The, 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 starting off with the with the Jack Barry one, hundred percent shouldn't be kicking it out. Like at the worst case, box night your man taking it on the, in the chest or whatever. Even if it spills slightly in front of you, you're still in pole position to win it. Um, the, the other side, Alan talked about the defenders. It was two or three in carry defenders that didn't even react. They weren't even coming running back. They actually just thought, oh, you know what, the ball's going to come in here. Jack Boyer's going to win it. We're going to come out like very, very slack um, for that goal. The first goal, especially as well. Um, like, there was plenty of carry men getting back, there was, but they were jogging. They were just sort of so slow. Yeah. Alan said about David Moore and coming back. I was. If, if that had happened the other way, uh, with Tyrone had conceded that goal, you'd have been fuming because and you, they'll watch that back and they'll be fairly annoyed because all it takes is David Moore to go across there, <clears throat> maybe another guy to come in and just sort of you're you're, you're just moving moving men. Uh, sideways and it, that goal doesn't happen. Um, so look, it's a uh, it's a learning curve. Kerry individually and defending were, were actually quite well. You talked about Tom O'Sullivan there. There were some individual players that played really well, but when it comes to that sort of collective, you always talk about cut night danger, uh, going to the nearest you know where the danger is. And, and Kerry didn't do that, they didn't seem to recognize or you know where the danger was. And ultimately, they hit three goals, so it, it was fairly. If it had it had been another, it should have been another fault. I'd have been fuming from a drone perspective, but uh, you know, they'll watch that back today or tomorrow, whenever they watch it back, and they'll be very disappointed. They could have at least stopped two of them goals very easily. Yeah, no, I completely. But I think, it, like, it's the difference between winning and losing all Ireland at, at like at that level is making those sort of runs that maybe David Moore didn't make that the carry defenders didn't come back to cover to help Jack Barry and that's like the difference between the Dublin team of 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 say that I played on in in the noughties versus the team I played on from from 2010 2011 on when Pat Gilroy got in charge like that was the difference between him. it wasn't necessarily the football or the players it was lads willingness to make those runs that no one sees to cover off a bit of space right. to stop those sort of goals happening and, and I think um, until Kerry sort that like it was very evident to me at the weekend that they hadn't really worked on that a lot and I think until they sort that out they're going to like they're going to have a problem against against the good teams they'll still beat the other teams but they're going to have a problem against the Torons against the Mayos against the Dublins until they fix that and, and, and I'm sure they will now because as Colin said there was it was so evident at the weekend the, the, yeah the, the, the Moran one definitely like I was going to leave that until part two he was very very lazy to get back I thought Paul Murphy committed himself way too soon yeah. and made it easy on Sludden to pick out McKenna instead of backing off a little bit it would have given yeah. Moran a chance to get back there was two mistakes there and how did Moran not spot the difference because the you, minute Peter Hart had that <coughs> ball and you could see Peter Hart had the shot on. He continued. Sludden's on the outside. Immediately, you say it from looking at it in the press box, trouble here for Kerry. And Mo- you look at Moran and he's not thinking that at all. What? Well, this, and this is something that will have to be discussed in the Kerry meeting and he talked to you. And we did it lots of times with Dublin. I'm sure, I'm sure Colin did as well with Toronto. Why didn't he make that run? What was going through your head when that... Did he think maybe Hart was going to tap it over the bar and he didn't have to get back there? But I think, and, and I found over the years, when you're chasing the play back, you're always under pressure. Like, he, he needed to get back there so he was facing the play coming in so he could force force Sludden or force Hart or whoever it was to make a decision to tap it over or whatever. Um, who did you say, shot? Um, Paul Murphy? Stepped out. He stepped out and made it a little bit too easy, but... I think David should have been back there to help him cover that. Um, it's, it's it's covering the it's we're talking about covering the covering the the danger of Dublin. I remember watching Dublin over the last few years. I don't know Alan whether you have been coached this way, but it seemed already evident when you were coming running back um, and you were under pressure and you may have been a sniff of a goal chance on. You ran this the, the fourteen to the D, or the six yard to get the day stop a goal if they kick a point over. They're more like, I've seen it more times. The, t- the team kicks a point and you see McCarthy and all these guys just come running out going, don't care, they didn't get a goal. And I, I don't know whether that was, it nearly looked like they'd been coached that way that if there was danger on, spot the danger early. You know, you're running back um, and you're in a bad position, just cover the goals and no goal. And, like, you know, if Toronto had tapped over a few points there, would they have won that game? questionable yeah no it is another one lads talking point before we'll, we'll, we'll get into some analysis in part two is the Paul Ganey chance Jesus 
what was now when I was watching the game I was saying what's Paul Ganey doing that's a little bit of overconfidence he could have tapped it into the net himself and then I watched it back and I'm putting the fault on Stephen O'Brien he stepped into the square mate looking yeah. for a pass and Ganey to be fair was rounding Morgan and Morgan got a bit of contact on him so he kind of dived and, and hand passed could he have stayed in his feet and tapped it in himself I know, why is like, he passing it to a man in the square why is the man in the square there's so many balls ups in that bloody um, yeah, I think it's difficult to, to blame Paul Ganey for I think I think that's if you have a man inside you with a handy, with a handy tap into the goal, you have to give it to him. And but not if he's standing in the square. He's pretty show. Well, he probably in the in the heat of the moment and split second, he didn't realise he's probably standing in the square. But as you say, I think it was up to Stephen O'Brien to hold his uh, hold to yeah. hold his run there. Um, and to be honest, like if he'd have stayed a bit flatter, it would have been an easier hand pass for for uh, and for Paul Gini as well to give across him. So, um, look, I think it wasn't a great day for Stephen O'Brien. I thought he struggled with with. with like we spoke about him on the show before, we know the pace he has and he's very direct, but I thought like he struggled when the space closed up, I thought he really struggled and when he had to break down, when he had to maybe change his game a little bit, um, maybe hold on to possession a little bit more, I thought he struggled with that and like again, it's probably, I'm sure it's a learning curve for him too. Yeah, running into into kind of blind alleys and stuff, that's kind of the worst part of Stephen O'Brien um, that we saw. What about the Nile Morgan point from, on a lighter note, what about the Nile Morgan point from halfway? I was tweeting about this I when Nile Morgan's actually trying a point from the halfway <laughs> line with a smiley foot, a couple of smiley faces. Then he did it. Then he put it over. That That's that's probably the longest. I don't think Began has done one from that distance. Has he, Colin? I don't, I don't know. I was trying to check that out. I don't I don't believe he has. Um, look, it was one of them ones at the stage of the game where, uh, look, it was one of them, if, if it goes over, Unbelievable. It was the last oh, kick yeah, of the yeah, half, it, I suppose. It, it, last kick of the half. There was no risk in it, you know. Um, but like it, just, it was just a, like you said about maybe there's a bit of a wind there, like, but that's a that's a massive kick. And to say, look, to take that on, um, took took a lot of courage, I'll say, because if he had it fluffed it or had it put it, you know, there would have been fairly a lot of people on his back, but an unbelievable kick. Like um, I don't think you'll see many, many more that's gonna go from that range, but uh maybe Began will have a goal uh, next year or something. Yeah, this <laughs> is, yeah. a bit further out. This um, but then it's, the flip side of that he tried one from the then obviously a real tight angle after that. So um, um I seen Frank I think it was Frank Burns shouting at me running back and Frank Burns I think had a few words choice words for for, for taking it on like so um, but at that stage of the game half you know last kick of the play um why not like you know why not have a goal so Clifford one was a confusing one he was obviously so brilliant in the game and it was the, the goal chance that Sean O'Shea obviously should have given it to him rather than you know the Pam in Morgan came out when Morgan was doing his calf I was thinking he's got a calf it's obviously got a cramp and then I was thinking in extra time right so he set out the first 10 minutes surely they're getting their fingers into that cramp and they're bloody loosening it out and stretching it out and he'd be on for the second one but then he had ice on his quad so I think he got both a dead leg off Morgan and the calf cramped. I'd say he just seemed to be. If if you have a dead leg, obviously, and you sit out to ten minutes, that's getting worse and worse as he sits down. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure if there was any way he could have back, he could have come back in and played. He would have. Um, uh, yeah, it looked like when Morgan just punched it out, we just caught him. Caught him. Yeah. We just caught him on the top of the tie with the knee or whatever. Um, and it was a like there was no issue with the tackle at all. But it was a bit of it was a bit of a hospital pass from Sean O'Shea and some. And, and again, kind of symptomatic of the pressure that Tyrone or sorry the Kerry forwards were feeling from the. From the pressures her own were putting on them, and um, like a footballer, Sean O'Shea's calibre would have it's expected it to be a little bit slicker. But uh, if you put that to Clifford's body, Clifford takes one step in and goal, he yeah. sticks yeah. it into the roof yeah. of the net. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was, that was another one of the goal chances that they that I suppose they let get away. But um, now obviously he was hurt because you can be sure he would have been back in if there was any way at all he could have played because he was like he was when he was playing. He so was well. exceptional, to be fair to him, especially when he stays patient and he stays in the full forward line and. Kind of gets a chance to get one on one with his man. He's just he's an exceptional kicker. Like we spoke about him, kind of turning onto his left foot, and is it, is it like is it a bit kind of one dimensional? Or if he's coming out from the right corner forward position, you know exactly where he's going. You might know where he's going, but he's still very difficult to stop. That kind of way he has a slinging the ball over his shoulder and, and kind of taking a step back and slinging it over the bar. He's he does a, it like a hurler. He takes it off the back yeah. foot. Yeah. So I don't really know how he does it. Yeah, and is the power it? on it, like he can like from anywhere inside fifty five yards off the back foot, he can. He can sling it over. He was he was excellent, but again, just 
I thought Kerry struggled in the rest of the forward line to get scores. Obviously, struggled to get scores in the rest of the forward line, and um, they just needed a little bit more from him. Yeah, is Peter Hartz and Conor Gormley's name being mentioned in the same sentences uh, up there on Saturday night and Sunday column? Because that block that was reminiscent of the Gormley one on Stephen MacDonald and you know you could criticise Killian Spillane for going with the foot that was closest to the man covering him because he's, he's, he's two footed or he could have tapped it over he probably didn't see Peter Hart coming out of nowhere but again this is more of the heroic kind of defending Frank Burns closed in on, on Clifford for another goal chance you know Hart did it was just real you know bodies on the line kind. and I suppose like if you're comparing Peter Hart to David Moran you know there's no comparison Peter Hart chased down that lost cause and got the block in. Yeah, look, absolutely. Um, not, I'm not taking anything away with, from the from the block. The decision probably to shoot was fairly tight angled, and uh, you know probably could have topped it over. Um, but look, it, it just epitomised what Trome were about. Um, and yeah, look, I suppose uh, I have seen him pl- plenty over social media uh, of comparing the t- comparing the two in, in, in the highlight reels, but. Uh, Look, Trum were just willing to put their bodies in the line. Like they knew that they were going to have to work to their absolute capacity to, to stay in the game and to ultimately win the game. Um, and as you say, look at watching Kerry at times getting back and trying to cover danger. It, it was a jog, a, a slow jog, and you know they didn't really seem uh, just not too bothered. Uh, which is which was strange for me to watch. While like the Trum lads, Pity Hart obviously come back that time to make an unbelievable block. Um, Burns, McKernan, there was a couple of different, a couple of different ads. They were bursting their gut every single time to cover, and you know, I said ultimately they stopped any goals, uh, and that was a massive thing for, for for you know at the outset thinking that if Toronto were going to win this game, they need to stop stop Kerry from scoring goals, and look, the the work rate and intensity was there for sure, um, and look, it, uh, but yeah, look, it's uh, from from a, from a heart, pretty hard point of view. Uh, I think that one will go down and that one will go down in the history books if if Jerome can go on ahead and uh, and win the All Ireland because it was a massive like if that goal goes in, you know, it puts Jerome under serious pressure. I think it was was a draw at the time um, at that stage of the game, and if that goes in, we're we're under serious pressure. Yeah, the lift like the lift the moment like that can give to a team as well, and the auction it gives like obviously Jerome are working really really hard. I'm sure lots of lads out on their feet, but a moment like that just can give you another ten minutes of energy. And I can't think of any moment. It was obviously an exceptional block and somebody return. I can't think of any moment like that from a Kerry player that would have given that would have given that auction or that that kind of level of encouragement to a Kerry team. It was like it was exceptional. Like like when Spillane was coming in, I was thinking he's just going to hand pass this over the bar, and he made the decision to go for goal. And as I said. Kind of Peter Hart had made that effort to get back there and put himself in a position to make the block, and it was a chef. So I'm, I'm I'm not quite sure I'd rank it up there with uh, with Conor Gormley's block. I think that was definitely a goal from Steve Mc um, from Steve McDonald if he hadn't made that block, but it was. Reminiscent, brilliant piece of skill. Reminiscent. Was a brilliant piece of skill in I, I, I just want to give this a mention, Colm, because like, I mean, I've talked about this way too much and your brother and Pat Spillane went at it and it's just because Brian Dewar was obviously asked about it um, in the press conference and he was getting a little bit pissed off. So he said, there's been a bit of a slant here. We've tried to pull a fast one. It was a factual thing based on the evidence. That's obviously putting the game, putting the game back and everything. And I think everybody is, is kind of missing what the big question here is, is um, obviously if Tyrone were unlucky enough to get all these cases in the community or whatever and they had to put the game back, you'd have a, a level of sympathy. The big thing here that people want to know the answer to is are all these cases Tyrone's own fault? Not the management, the players who went out and celebrated with fellas that were at close contacts and it went throughout the panel. If it's the case that they went out celebrating the Ulster final with close contacts, you would have very little sympathy on them looking for the two weeks. If it was a case that got it in the community, you would probably have sympathy for them, you know, for it's an all Ireland semi-final. So the big question is, were they all out in a pub <laughs> the night after the Ulster final, Colin? Uh, look, I, I, I genuinely don't know where they picked it up. Um, you don't know the name of the pub or you don't know where they picked it up? <laughs> I know I genuinely don't like I suppose you look at it from a point of view if they were out um yeah fair enough like but uh, I would suspect if they had been out together after those are final they would have been together fair enough but they're in a change room together they're in close contact with each other anyway so um look they're only it's, in it's a, a they're, they're only in a changing room on on a match day. They're not in a changing room, I presume, at training. They they keep completely away from each other, and they're not close contacts unless they're driving to the training together. They would have been in the dress room on the uh, Ulster yeah. final on Ulster final Ulster day. final day. 
and dr like driving together, I don't know. Like I know that at the very start of the COVID, the start of the year, they were very, very like thrown where very, very like they've never done nothing over lockdowns. They, you know, they had, were very strict on travel arrangements. Um, definitely throughout the last few months, I I can't say whether the boys, you know yourself, boys could have started to carpool and, and and bits and pieces together. That could happen naturally. Um, so look, I, I probably didn't. Patch Milan and Sean obviously seen it uh, at the weekend that they were going at it. The, the Tyrone made their choice in, in, a, in a way. Um, how they picked it up, it's not for me to say whether they were out or not. They could have been. Um, I would suspect if they were, they were all together. Um, but at the same time, look, lads, in all reality, like we're in the middle of a pandemic. If they, you know, they, they've tried to act responsibly. I know for a fact, as they, 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 they stuck by the guidelines, whenever the lockdowns and everything else was going on. They, they pulled out of the of the semi final. You know, uh, Kerry came out and said they played any time. The GA given their the weeks. So, oddly, yes, the, the throne probably forced the GA's hand in a way. Um, but I know for a fact that there was obviously a lot of lads had COVID and are still struggling with it and whatnot. So, um, to answer your question about how they picked it up, I, I, I don't know. Like I know they went on about vaccinations as well, but on and that were all the lads vaccinated and 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 and, and, and you know. The answer is probably not. I don't think they all are. Um, but I know for a fact that Tyrone up here at the minute with, with COVID cases is fairly high. And, you know, where they've picked it up, I can't answer. I don't know. I, like, the GA tested them when they, you know, one Saturday morning and they got all the results. So it's it was up to them at that point. Yeah, that's the thing. Like Richard Donnelly, Rory Brennan and Niall Kelly, you mentioned they didn't make the 26. So whether they're still struggling, there is no doubt there was no one on that Tyrone squad that took the pitch on Saturday that was struggling in any way with it. The reality is, like I said on the show here for the last few weeks, most of them would have been positive without necessarily being sick. They would have had to just, you know, isolate on their own and stuff. So, like, I mean, I know Peter Keane was saying, and it did affect Kerry's preparations to five weeks. But Tyrone didn't have much of a preparation either. Yeah. So it's not really an, an excuse. Tyrone had a worse preparation than Kerry. Kerry just had a boring five weeks. Whereas Tyrone didn't have... There were different fellas isolating. Didn't affect their fitness because they could... Most of the lads that just tested positive and were fine were training away, you know. So it was just a weird build-up for both teams. Yeah, it was. It wasn't ideal for either camp, I'm sure. But look, I'm sure Kerry players and management won't use it as an excuse. Um, we spoke no. about it a few, a few weeks ago, the what-ifs. Remember the what ifs? Yeah. What if somebody gets COVID? <laughs> <laughs> what if 17 did of the Peter opposition Keane, gets it? Peter Keane have a, have a list of what ifs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll come back and we'll analyse the game next. Okay, so the first place I want to start here, lads, is the Kerry kickout. So, like, I mean, uh, this has been something I've been talking about right throughout the championship, and it's this sh these short yeah. kickouts. Kerry won 100% of their kickouts. Doesn't that sound fantastic, Alan? Like, I mean, what a brilliant return for the goalkeeper. They all went short. I think the longest kick out they took was to Sean O'Shea, who came short and Hampsey let him go and he got it around the 45. I wouldn't call it a long kick out, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. Like, I mean, the reality is they won all their kick outs. I think they scored four points off all those kick outs. Why? Tapping it to a cornerback. He's running up the field. Tyrone are hassling him tackling him he's looking up he's under pressure from being tackled he looks up everybody's being marked players don't like to give a pass that's not perfect by the time he reaches the Tyrone 45 Tyrone have their entire half back line back helping the defence and now you're nearly in a stalemate and Kerry don't know what to do what why when they did so well on Morgan's kickouts I think they won uh, Tyrone only won 5 of 12 of Morgan's long kickouts Kerry had an advantage out there why would they not take the risk to go along with their kickouts? If they win it, someone could run onto a break and now you're bearing down on goals. There's a huge reward for winning a long one. All day they went short with their kickouts. Yeah, like it was very evident that 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 Tyrone were happy to concede the kick out in the in in the Kerry full back line. Um and Kerry probably worked hard in the build up to this game and how do we retain, how do we win our kickouts, how how um, how do we retain a high percentage of our kickouts? And it was a ready-made, a ready-made setup for them. Um, but I think you need to be adaptable, and they should have seen after fifteen or twenty minutes, right? We're not getting any joy from these short kickouts because we've too far up the field to go. Tyrone have time to get their defensive structure in place. They were letting Frank Burns drop off, so he was. They were getting their sweepers back every time, every time Kerry were coming up the field. So they should, and as you say. 
I think Kerry had the advantage in midfield. I thought Moran was on top in the air in midfield. I thought the two young Tyrone midfielders were struggling a little bit in the air, um, particularly on their own kickouts. So I think they should have changed. Or some, and they had lots of opportunity. Like we spoke on the show before about the water break at half time. You had a second water break at extra time. And they never yeah. really changed it at all. They never said at any stage, right, let's try kick along. See, can we win one? Um, I know you have to think back to, 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 to 2014, Dublin Donegal, when we tried to press up and won over the top and Donegal were in for a goal. So I think certainly at some stage in the game, they should have, they should have said, OK, we need, to, we need to try something different here. And as you said, the all risk reward. Like it is a bit more riskier kicking it out there. You might lose an odd one. But the reward if you win it out there means Tyrone haven't got their defensive shape set up. And then then maybe Kerry could have started to play their start to play their kicking game that they couldn't get going at all because because Tyrone had so many men filling the pockets. Yeah. It's, it's like it's not it's not rocket science at this stage of uh, at this stage of no. the championship. I think at some stage it's you logic. have to change. It's logic. And like I mean it's a real Dublin thing, but Dublin love running the ball and they seem to have the athleticism to do it. Another thing it did it succeeded in doing was tiring the <coughs> shite out of poor Jason Foley who cramped up at the end. Tom O'Sullivan, all their fenders were out in their feet, Colin, I suppose, because geez a long kick out gives them a break for a second. Do you know what I mean? It's a gruelling game to be constantly getting that ball from a short kick out and going up the field with, you know, the pressure to run. Now, Tyrone did drop off and completely conceded in the second half when they had the black cards. You'd understand that. But for the most part, Tyrone wanted the pressure. They weren't putting huge pressure. They get, Kerry got away the short one way too easily a lot of the time, but it nearly worked against Kerry in the end. Yeah, look, Tyrone were trying to press up at times from what I, from, from what I was seeing and... Uh, ultimately, when you're trying to coach these things in, in training sessions, you're looking at, look, lads, you know, we obviously want to have one man back as a sweeper. If we're one man, of, you know, if you want to give it to them short, you give it to the cornerbacks. You let them boys come out with it. And at least, as I said on chat about there, that you have your you have time to get back, you have your structure in place, and you're not, you know, you're not leaving the house open effectively. So, like, but from a carry point of view, you work you work so hard in training trying to work out how to get how to win your kick out. Um ultimately you want to win it as far to feel as possible. People nearly think nowadays that if you kick that ball long, it's fifty fifty and you know it's just too high risk. Um it worked against Gary at the weekend, but they were on top in the midfield in terms of the break ball. I, I'm not sure of the stats about how many break balls they won, but like I remember just watching even from Nas kick out like Kerry were cleaning up. Like it'd be very rarely thrown or winning any of their own kick outs when it went long. So um, yeah, look, there's probably no excuse that, you know, I say given the water breaks, that you could have changed that up and go, look, lads, every now and again, put it out there like, and give us a bit of a chance. Because if you win the ball out there and throw an hour pushed up, you know, all it takes is one catch, a uh, mark, ball inside. And it's more likely like, the way Clifford was playing one step and it was a point like So uh, it, it just. It didn't give Tyrone any headaches. Um, at the end of the day, they, they, I said whenever they went, uh, whenever they had the black cards, they just let just let them have it. Because go right, lads, come on, break us down. A wee bit like the way we would have played over the last number of years at times. You're going yeah. like, come on, we're we're set up, come on, come and attack us. And without Clifford and Sean O'Shea firing at all cylinders, there was there was you know you know Tyrone had their matchups right. They had Myler nipping at um Paddy Clifford, and you know the the, the Tyrone had targeted out their key men to say look. Don't get them boys any auction. You know, if we're set up, they'll struggle to break us down. And it was a bit like a few years back. Um, I know obviously Kerry won that game that day, but we had them fairly well worked out, and uh, and we're saying, right, come on, head, and they did. They, 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 again, it seemed at the weekend there that they were they were sort of struggling, to, and you know, Trum were getting their score. They felt far far easier. Yeah, they definitely were. Like I mean, when you look at Paddy Clifford, I think he kicked the ball once into David, and David tripped up, and that was it. Like I mean, and he went out centre forward. Um, that's where he was playing and Sean O'Shea went into the corner and Gini kind of played a little bit in front of Clifford and Sean O'Shea like I mean no kicking game nothing yeah. and without moving it down again as the team's tackling you and they're coming back like I just found it incredible but just stick on the, the kickouts for a second because Aidan O'Rourke had the, the stat for this 23 short kickouts only 4 points 17% so Kerry were running themselves up into an area where they were getting turned over. Now, you drive a long kick out, Alan. You say 50-50. I would say 60-40 in Kerry's favour because they have better, better fetchers. Is 50-50, even at worst, is 50-50 not better than the 17? Because yeah. people always think, oh, you retained your kick out. But what comes of that after? Like, f let the play go on a little bit. Are you turned over around midfield? Then was that kick out worth it? You won it. But what was the point of it? You know, I think people get skewed on kickout success. Rather, like this is the perfect example. 100% yeah. under kickouts, Alan. 
And it made it, it, it ruined their game plan. Stephen Cluxon's strategy with kickouts over the years, it started off as just trying to retain our kickouts wherever, into the corner, wherever we could, just retain our kickouts. But as the game evolved and as Stephen's kicking game evolved, he wanted us to win the he wanted us to win the kick out as far out the field, as Colin mentioned, as far out the field as we can. So like we've all seen Stephen and the good goalkeepers launching those big kick outs over the over the press. And they're the ones that you get the breaks from. They're the ones that you get the goals from. And to see Kerry, and I think Tyrone were actually a little bit nervous to flood players to the break as well. So I think Kerry would have found if they had it kicked it long, that they would have outnumbered Tyrone because they didn't want the half back line coming in under under breaking ball and stuff because as Colm said they wanted to cover the house behind so I think Kerry still would have had them outnumbered out around the breaking ball and uh, um, we saw that on on, on Niall Morgan's kickouts. Kerry got a lot of joy off them and it's just it's it's I could understand how they start the game off like that and they start to win kickouts but then when they see like if the management didn't pick up that right, we're not getting any joy from winning our kickout shorts we need to try and win it a bit further out the field so we can give a kick pass in before Tyrone have all their men back and for them not to do that right throughout the 70 minutes and into extra time is um, well it's probably a bit more difficult when, when Tyrone had the men back and they really conceded the kickouts but there was lots of opportunity for Kerry to go a bit longer with the kickouts yeah. and when just, oh yeah when didn't take it. when when, when the team is conceding the kick out you, you kind of have to take yeah, that yeah. handy one because like I mean you're outnumbered out the field I can understand that and I can, I think that's where these short kick outs to the cornerback came from from teams dropping off Dublin and Cluxton just going to Johnny Cooper yeah. the whole time and yeah. that's kind of where it came about we talk about the, the sorry go on Alan I think there's lots of little things a lot there's lots of little tactical nuances the likes of that the likes of not tracking the man those sort of things that just point to me that Kerry just weren't that tactically well set up to compete with Tyrone Um and like for me, like the management looking back at this game this week when they watch it back are going to see lots of these little things say, how did we not, how did we not fix that? And I think, as I said, for Kerry to move to the next level, some of those things need to be sorted out. Yeah, no, they definitely do. We talked about the Kerry kicking game, Colin, but the Tyrone kicking game was abysmal as well, let's be honest. Like every every ball they kicked into Donnelly, barred Donnelly's uh, uh, mark. Uh, Jason Foley beat him out to it got a fist in uh, Thomas Sullivan destroyed McCurry on kick passes in that didn't work for them at all Tyrone got all their joy running from deep you know when they did get a turnover and four of their in the first half alone four of their six defenders all scored Yeah and I think that's Kerry struggled with um, like I said earlier Kerry's individual defending at times was admirable you know they were that's whenever Tyrone had to kick the ball in especially that straight run Yeah, you know Throw more, throw more wind at all. Thomas Summers right up behind McCray, knocking it away. It's just fully the same. So that really didn't work. But uh, I suppose, I suppose Throne have tried to adapt to that more kicking approach this year. And there was some speculative ones as well. Mm-hmm. It went in. I think Paddy Campsey one time put a long one in, and there's a couple of ones were very uncharacteristic. But the problem then was that yeah, you know, for Kerry is that they weren't tracking them late runners. Paddy Campsey came up one time just nobody marking them ball out straight over the bar run back to me the same these guys can all shoot they're all okay they're all referred to as cornerbacks fullbacks and whatnot but these guys all play out the field for their for their clubs so they can all score so uh thankfully from a throne perspective you know i say they were able to just get up uh get up late runners carry i'm not sure again talked about the the setup defense as a whole for, for carry in terms of defensively they just didn't seem to track them guys at all and they were just strolling through and let free for for very very easy points. Like you'd be very disappointed, while I say watching that back where the guys are just coming up and kicking a point with no pressure on them whatsoever. So, um, yeah, look at from a Trump perspective, forced to run the ball a bit more because individual man on man defending for Kerry was very good, but um, collectively, I say Alan t- talked about there that they'll watch that back and go tactically how to be not to spot that. Like so, it's. Uh, but these guys are all very comfortable in the ball, and you know, and most of them, most of them were run the score sheet by the end of it. Would you say Tyrone played well? I'd say that they defended heroically. They put pressure on all over the field. They were very, very good defensively. I thought go. I thought going forward, Tyrone were poor. Yeah, I, I, like so. I was coming back. I, like I thought Tyrone were happy enough to play the game, whatever way it panned out. I don't think that they necessarily cared that the kicking game didn't work. It didn't work. They could just revert back to the running game, and I thought they were much more comfortable kind of changing the game plan or playing whatever way whatever way they had to play to win the game I thought Kerry when their kicking game didn't work I thought they looked like they ran out of ideas they were forced yeah. to run it and they just they're weren't. terrible at running it like when they well, reach, well, when, like when they a team has like they hadn't practiced it like, yeah. like New York at Dublin played a lot more patient like like very good footballers playing with Kerry very smart footballers but it looked like they hadn't discussed it what happens 
what happens if Tyrone's set up like this? How are we going to break them down? We're just going to try to keep running and running at them. It doesn't work like that. You need to be a bit more patient. You need to wait for the holes to appear. You need to try and draw men out, switch it back to the other side. And we didn't see, we didn't really see any of that from, from Kerry at all. From guys it's, it's who should be very comfortable on, on I think the from, I think it's very hard for Kerry too because they come through Monster fairly easily yeah. and they probably hadn't met. You know, when people talked about oh, Tyrone's come through Monaghan, Donegal and, and whatnot and it's come through tough tests. Kerry... If you don't have that what if scenario, if, if, if they're not doing that, they haven't played it to date. So you're watching all the, the games that you've played to date and trying to make improvements. But, you know, Tyrone probably would have benefited far more from what they watched uh, watched back then with Kerry have because they'd be so comfortable up in there. Yeah. yeah. But, but if you're a Kerry, like if you're a Kerry manager and looking at this, how are Tyrone going to set up? There's no doubt you're going to have to be patient to try and break them down. Like even if Tyrone are kind of changing the way they're playing a little bit under the new management, like you still know Tyrone are going to drop a lot of men back when they're defending, and they're going to. But the thing was, they weren't really like, say for example, you know they're back in that defensive structure. Paddy Clifford looks out for a ball. Myler slapping at him. Kerry were never allowed comfortably play yeah. around the outside, if you know what I mean, because Tyrone yeah, pushed out and yeah. made them work everywhere and make a quick decision or you'll be doubled up on. I thought Tyrone were very impressive in that. I do accept your point that Kerry could have worked the opening. What I thought Kerry were, they're a little bit desperate. It's like there's a shot clock on them. It's like we have to get it in mm. as fast as possible, two quick hand passes. They could have been a bit more patient, but I don't think Tyrone allowed them, you know, have that, oh, here's a lovely, comfortable ball now, especially not their, their creative fellas. For example, you know, they might let Jack Barry yeah. run around with it out there, but none of their good lads, or Sean O'Shea, Clifford, none of their creative lads were allowed to get time, you know, to look up and give that nice pass in. Yeah, no, it's a fair point. They did. They obviously targeted key men and they obviously saw Paddy Clifford, someone like you wouldn't look at him and say, oh, he's going to get a load of scores, but he's very industrious around the play. He links a lot of plays, getting out on ball, setting up scores. So they obviously targeted him from watching the videos that here's a guy that has to be stopped because he's, he's getting a lot of possessions in the game. And, Conor Moyle was obviously earmarked to pick him up. He did a very good job on him. Sean O'Shea. I think Sean O'Shea sometimes struggles in the tight encounters. Um, he needs a bit of space to play. He's obviously a very good playmaker, so he got tagged as well. And then after that, in the half-forward line, you're left with Darren Moyne and Stephen O'Brien, who probably aren't the most creative of, of like a footballers in terms of breaking down a system like that. They're more guys that, 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 that are very good running with the ball, direct running with the ball. So, as I said, Kerry, it just looked like they ran out ideas a little bit. And obviously, look, it's not easy when Tyrone put that sort of pressure on you. And when you're under that sort of pressure, you start to make uncharacter- uncharacteristic-, uncharacteristic mistakes and then that just seeps through the team. Yeah. Um, especially inexperienced guys. God, here we are. It feels like it's David Clifford making a mistake that, that we never see him make. Like the, um, for Conor McKenna's first goal, David Clifford took a solo and he towed it out in front of him. Like, when did you ever see a fella like him doing that? But that was just as a result of the pressure he was feeling from the Tyrone backs. Yeah. And, um, little mistakes started to happen and it could seep through a team. And, and look, and saying that we're talking a lot about Tyrone were excellent, Kerry were awful. I thought Kerry c- could still have won the match. Kerry dominated the game the, in a lot of probably ways. Probably the better team. And as I said, yeah. like, I wouldn't panic away from Kerry. I still think they're easily, easily in the top two or three in the country. And They'll be back next year and they'll be in an All Ireland semi final next year. But they'll certainly learn a lot from last weekend about how to how they need to play and how you need to when when you're in trench war, warfare as that game was on on on, on Saturday afternoon. You, like you need to be willing to go there when the team isn't letting you play your football. Well, that's um, and you need to f- find a different way to win it. Um, like I mean, at what stage did you think Tyrone? Like Tyrone for for the first half, the the second half, the black cards made Tyrone maybe go a little bit back more and concede the kicks. In the first half, Tyrone met Kerry head on, and they were leading by a point at half time. The goal being being such a big score, column. Like at that stage, are you starting to believe here? There's a big performance in us here. Probably, probably was like a, they set out their intention fairly early that I think they were going to press as uh, higher than. Those thrown teams in, in in the past are renowned for just dropping off and letting teams come at them, but they definitely were pressed. And we talked about you know the guys marking them higher higher up out the field, and yeah. uh, like that that it becomes a it comes obviously a bit more risk. Uh, and I was just glad to see it. I was going look lads, we're going to concede a lot more here, but we're definitely going to you know put teams on the back foot. We're going to score more on the other end. So like we 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 talked about throwing the the last few months on the show about taking more risks and you know. To win something or to, to get into another final, they have to do something different and bring chaos and all this sort of piece. Of, you know, and they, they did that. Like they, 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 they industriously tried to actually push out. And yeah, when they went to the black yards, they had to revert. Like it would have been silly for them to with a man down to start trying to press carry, and you know there'd be serious gaps to be left there. So 
I felt fairly early on that, and I felt before the game, if, if thrown to stay in this as long as possible, um, that they will have the beating of them. Like they weren't perfect. We, we talked to said there, like the, they got three goals, and a couple of them were resulting from really poor carry defend and carry. I suppose in the other end, if they had a slot of one end goals in, you know that that gives them a lift. That gives them a real belief, and you know things maybe then starts to settle down. But because they never actually got an end goals, you know, you know yourself that you score a goal. The whole crowds in it, it gives you a massive lift, gives you a bit more energy, and things are things are really good. But uh, because Throne got the goals, and and, and you know it, it just gave them a bit of belief to get over the line. So like the, the performance was, was I say, was by no means perfect, but I just knew they had that sort of from early on in the game that they were they were there to play ball, like they were there to go, they're going to take hits, they were going to, you know, they they were just there to, um, they weren't there to make up the numbers, like that, that's, that's what the the bookies suggested. Like they they definitely. Um, so they just played more freer. The guys just look freer. They look like they're just they've got the shackles off a wee bit from the last watch the throne the last couple of years. They're sort of they're nearly in the shell a wee bit and uh they're used to playing a certain way there at the weekend. Say so it wasn't perfect, but you know, they give uh they just they played with freedom and there was some good stuff and there was some bad stuff in it as well. Yeah. Kerry in the first half, like I mean, they butchered a lot of attacks. Even a couple of ones that they did get, you know, maybe a kick pass in or two, they didn't kind of come off. They messed up the goal. There was a good strong win there. I was at the game and like I mean it was favouring Tyrone in the first half and Kerry in the second half. And then Kerry destroyed Morgan's kickouts at the start of the second half and they went went from one two down to two up. And you're thinking Kerry should push on here. Even though most of their forwards aren't playing well. And then at the second water break, they were still two points up. He took off Stephen O'Brien and Gini and brought on Adrian Spillane and Dermot O'Connor. Now, you're taking off two fours. Now, they weren't playing well, either of them, but they weren't direct like-for-like replacements. Do you know, they were more yeah. conservative. Adrian Spillane's not going to do much for you. Like, he got a pass off his brother and made an awful kind of effort. Dermot O'Connor came into it in, at the, in the extra time. Don't think they were the greatest substitutes because they started Darren Moynihan. They brought on Killian Spillane at half time. There's your two replacements for the two boys that were already used up. And they looked at the bench and like, you know, it's Tommy Walsh. They didn't use him at all. You know, I remember against Tyrone in the league when they were, they were hammering Tyrone. When Tommy Walsh came on, he got a couple of lovely long diagonals. They gave him none of those kind of passes. So, like, I mean, it's a strange one. And it's, it's funny enough, even in extra time when Tyrone got to, went to five up, Kerry showed massive character to come back. And they got it right back to a point. And after they got it back to a point, after that kick out, they turned over uh, Dara Mina or Dara, Can- Dara Canavan. And you're thinking, Jesus, Kerry are really coming back here. And it was actually that ball ended up with Tom O'Sullivan, who kicked it into Tommy Walsh and Michael McKernan intercepted it. And that was the end of it. Tyrone saw out the last four minutes kind of comfortably. Like, And was that the right ball to Tommy Walsh? Probably not at that time. It was forced. But it felt like Kerry had real momentum in that yeah, extra time. Um, um, and when they got back to a point up, there was still six left. And I was thinking, like, they've clawed this back here now. They're going to go on and win this. It was like it that like pass, like not reaching its destination, sucked off. That, that sucked seemed like it was the last neck. kick yeah. of the game. And to be fair to Tyrone, like, after being five up, Kerry got back to a point with six minutes left. Then you're shitting it like, God, we had a five-point lead. We're after blowing it now and they still have six minutes to get an equaliser. To be fair to them, they did shut them out. But I think just to come back to the substitutes, um, look, it's been discussed lots of time. What impact are you going to get off your substitutes? Kerry got very little impact off their substitutes. Tyrone brought on, on, on McShane, who we'd spoken about before on the show, about being a, a really good option off the bench. Looks really hungry, looks fit, and he kicks one three. And he was a real thorn in the side when he came on, just as his sheer presence alone. Derek Canavan obviously came on as well and, and he I thought he did okay. Like I thought his goal chance he, he kinda of butchered it as well. I thought it was a poor effort. Machine got the he got the flick on it afterwards, but it wasn't a great finish considering he was bearing down on goal. But yeah. um Tyrone got something out of substitutes, Kerry didn't really get anything. Yeah, that's it. So what about Peter Keane then, Colin? I don't know if he should be throwing it at you. You might want him to stay in Kerry. Like I mean, um three years I don't know, I was tweeting the other night, like Kerry seemed to be in a situation where they're able to. Ha- I compared them to Arsenal under Arsene Wenger, where they play lovely football. Everyone admires them. They're excellent at hammering the the poor teams, but when it comes up to a fight, you know they did beat Tyrone two years ago in a fight, but they, they've lost to Dublin, they've lost to Cork, and now they've lost to Tyrone in fights. And like the accusation with Kerry, even in the noughties, was that they could hammer Mayo in finals, but they couldn't beat you know Tyrone or they lost Armagh or whenever it became a real fight, maybe in two thousand eleven against G that Kerry don't seem to be up for that fight. They don't seem to win those games. 
Yeah, the, the world we're in at the moment is fairly, uh, fairly difficult for managers, uh, if, if, especially for someone who, if, if, especially for Peter <laughs> looking out for Kerry, because if you've no, uh, you know, all irons to show after a few years, people's calling for your head regardless. Like, and they have had a national league and a couple of months or tails uh, in, the, in them few years, but obviously haven't got the uh haven't got the, the all ireland so look at it they have the, the, they've, they've played some quality football i knew even this year people looked at the the, the match for trolling against Kilar- down in killarney where Kerry blew them away and whatnot and i sort of felt that that was a a one-off Kerry have played some brilliant football but yeah you look at the last couple of years lost this year probably in a fairly tight encounter you can give them a wee bit of a bye ball for that because that was such a like Kerry could have won that game very very easily uh didn't but uh, Cork last year um, as well was a, a, a massive disappointment in a, in a, I suppose, a mad COVID year. So th- th- there'll be a lot of question marks and be a lot of people uh, probably looking at this now going, you know, time to move on. Um, but, you know, it's it's very, very hard for him. Like he, he has had some success, but, you know, a bit like what Trome were like for a few years and that, you know, we, we played some good football, we won Ulster Tells, but we never actually got, got, the, got the big prize at the end of it. So um, th- I said it'll be a, probably a mixed bag of uh, emotions down in Kerry at the moment. Yeah, look, look, it's hard to know. I suppose at the start of the year there was some some mumblings coming out that that kind of some of the players weren't happy with what was going on, and um, he's obviously had a very good underage underage success with Kerry, a lot of underage success with Kerry, but ultimately he hasn't managed to deliver the All Ireland as Callum said. And um, look, but for me, you have to look at how. There's some exceptional footballers, but how do they perform tactically? That's what the manager's job is, to set the team up tactically, look at the opposition, stifle the opposition, and then go on to win, win the match yourself. And I just looked to me yesterday that they looked a little bit naive coming in against the Tyrone team, who didn't really throw any surprises out of the bag. They obviously battled hard. They were ferocious in the tackle. They went after Kerry. But God, if you don't expect that from a, from a Tyrone team in an all in semi-final, and you could see it coming with Brian Dewar. Like they were changed. They weren't going to sit back the way maybe Tyrone had a couple of years ago, they were going to come out and try and play and they were going to be hungry. So there was no surprises from Tyrone for me and Kerry just looked like they weren't set up very well to, to kind of counteract that and to go and beat it. Um, so I think that's, that's going to put him under pressure. We saw Tommaso Shea was in the Sunday game last night saying he's not sure if this is the management team to, to win an All-Ireland for Kerry. Um, and looking at it tactically, how Kerry set up tactically yesterday, uh, I'd have my reservations as well. But who's next in line? Like who else is down there? I don't know. Yeah, is Tomas himself in the in the? I like throw in him the in the. Mi- I throw is, him is in the mix. Declan like they Sullivan. do look. Declan Sullivan. They do look like I think they need. I think they need a good link back to the team. The team that won five five All Irelands. The team with an audience. I think they need someone from that team to come through. They look like they're. Look, there's tough defenders like there. Like, like there's no doubt Thomas Sullivan is a tough. He's a tough cornerback. There's no doubt Jason Foley is a tough cornerback. Paul Murphy's a hardy, a hardy fella. He's a wing well. back though. They need a center half back. They need a centre half back. Need, they, need back. they need a bit of steel there, like David Moore. And he did, like he did okay. Yes, he's thirty three. Does he need? Does he need someone else, a settle midfielder alongside him there? Do they need someone like someone like a Brian Fenton to come in as a young lad and really, really step up to the plate? And um, but their their Brian Fenton is playing Aussie rules. Yeah, O'Connor. But yeah, and then and then even you look up front and 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 you look at Moynihan and and Stephen O'Brien, who are really dangerous attackers. Like there's no like there's no doubt about it. If they're given the space to play, they're really dangerous. But do they need do they need someone like a Paul Galvin or a Declan O'Sullivan, someone like that, an inspirational half forward that can that can drive the team forward? And they just look to be missing. I suppose last week we were saying Kerry were going to win the All Ireland. Now we're saying they're missing. Are they missing three or four players, and they need a new manager? So it's amazing how we can change things. But they probably are missing a little bit of steel throughout the team. That that well, that's the thing. And like I mean, when you look at it, if Kerry had won that game by a point, everything would be rosy in their garden, and we'd probably be here picking apart things that Tyrone could have improved on. You know, Colm, uh, as in. They're, you know, they had their defence sorted, but they've a lot of work to do up front because that didn't really work. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. what we would be saying. Uh, and that's why I feel that it's hard. It's very hard, Peter Keane. Like uh, football is so fickle. Like uh, if you know someone don't get them three goals at the weekend, or uh, probably lose the game, and you know we're we're sort of probably would have given someone a bit of a bye ball going first year in charge, and uh, you know we'll, we'll get you know there's no wouldn't it be picking at management. I say you might have been picking at other things, but like yeah, it's it's harsh. I think I think uh, you know he's that game at the weekend. Tactically, Alan's probably right. Tactically, Jerome were set up that way, but better and they had that hunger to to vote and a few goals. Like, don't get me wrong, like they scored three goals, guys. You got to remember that. Yeah. Like, people talk about goals winning games. Like if, if 
I guess, an awful... Every time you concede a goal, Kerry, and every time they did concede a goal, they kept coming back. They went throwing went five up, and I thought, I was sitting watching it going game over. Yeah, I thought, I thought it could have been... Shoot back in yeah. it, so... There, there was some good, there's some really good heart shown by Kerry in the, in the game as well. Like, and I say, if, if, if Tommy Watts knocks that last point over or whatever, and tr- Kerry come out the other end, then we're saying, look, what a steely performance from Kerry. And there's no doubt then Peter Keane's, you know, 100% for the, for, for the following year. So it, it's it's a difficult one to manage. I think, yeah, there, there's obviously, uh, they didn't say tactically set up probably as well as their own, but look, there was something to say thrown got their got their luck and uh, um, the rubber the green probably in it as well to get them over the line. I d- that does have to be pointed out the character Kerry showed because when they went five down, I thought it could be ten at that stage because they had complete they were out on their feet. Um, you know, Tyrone had gone back now and they've turned them over and breaking up the field and it was like, oh God, this yeah, is yeah, really yeah. gone. Like this is gone from Kerry completely now. And I don't know how they turned it around to get it back. Just pure probably heart a little bit of nerves from Tyrone maybe and you know five points up in extra time you think that's probably it yeah I suppose at that stage they were they they, they kind of had nothing to lose so they went after it and I suppose psychologically at the start of the game Kerry were probably thinking rather than Kerry going to win this match they just waited whereas Tyrone went after it Um and look, as like as Colin says, like is it like like we're talking about little moments in the game. Like if if Jack Barry gets a clean connection and that high ball coming in with his foot, Kerry probably win the match. If he catches that, Kerry prob- pro- probably win the match. Like the couple of goal chances, Paul Keeney's goal chance, which you would expect him to score ninety nine times out of a hundred, to get a goal there, Kerry win the match. So it's it, it's like it is rough on Peter Keane, um, and there's going to be a lot of people calling for his head down with Kerry now. There's no doubt about it because. He hasn't managed to land on Ireland in three years, but but but, and that's what you're measured on. Downey Kerry Ultimate. it's not monsters, they're not national leagues, um, unfortunately for him. But like I said before, I just think I just think tactically there was a few things that just stood out to me that I thought, is this is this the right man for the job? And um, and it's a big step up. Like he's come from managing underage teams into an intercounty team, and it can take a long number of years to really understand the tactical nuances of 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 senior intercounty football. Like like even from when I started to compete, like the amount of stuff you learn going through a number of managers, through a number of teams, like and you put it all together, and then yeah. he he doesn't really have that experience because he's come through underage, and it is different to senior football. Like the tactical side of senior intercounty football is like is way ahead of is way ahead of underage minor or even under twenty one because of the time you have with guys. Um, but, but I just thought they lacked a little bit there at, at the weekend. I'm yeah, La- uh, just the last point I'll make on this, that, that that league game is the worst thing that could have happened, uh, Kerry. Six goals, because Tyrone learned so much from it. They would have looked at the video. Kerry kind of decided we're a goal. We're going to get goals this year, and they overdid looking for goals, I thought, against Tyrone, trying to work it in when they could have taken a point. Um, with Tyrone learning, and it was a McKenna Cup game, really, because it was a league game that had no bit you know no pre it was a pre-season game so there was yeah. nothing and everybody read too much into it probably six goals oh and mm. Tyrone are gone away there learning how Paddy Clifford and Darren Minahan ran amok from the half forward line and oh, right we're going to have to tag them and they learned so much mm. from it I'm sure from that game and they did and no one does the underdog tag better than Tyrone I was on the receiving end of it myself a couple of times um so I think all the cards, like when you look back now in hindsight, I suppose all the cards are probably stacked in Tyrone's favour. They had nothing to lose coming into this game. Nobody gave them a chance. They'd been hammered by Kerry, Kerry earlier on in the year. Dublin had been beaten. So everyone said, this is Kerry's chance to win the All-Ireland now. So, yeah. um, and they played it perfectly. The management and the players played it perfectly. And, and, and But as we said, it is a game of very small margins and it was very small margins on the day. Yeah, there's a feel of 2008 about Tyrone. Um, I get the feeling of without the beards. I think Michael <laughs> O'Neill has a moustache there. Maybe that's about all the facial hair they have. Maybe Joe McMahon has a beard. Does he, uh, Colin? We're not, <laughs> we're not too sure. I don't think, no, I don't think so. I think right. they, they maybe try something different. Just the clean the shaving year. Feeds maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the clean shaving and skin stuff. That's, that's probably what's coming in. All right, we'll leave it there, lads, and we'll do performance of the weekend next. All right, performance of the weekend. So the first one is a Kerry man and it's David Clifford, probably the only Kerry man that's on my list. So there's one other. Um, like, I mean, eight points. He didn't play the full game, Alan, obviously. He got four from play, two marks and two frees. Like, he was on one leg and he won, he won a free. And he, won two free he scored a free and won a free um, on one leg. I have a big problem with him being stuck out in corner forward in the number 13 position. I know he's good coming in off the, the left, 
But I think that'll get a little bit too obvious. He's got a brilliant right. He can never dummy onto his right because he's often too far on that side and it's too tight of an angle. Why the man isn't standing right on the edge of the square, the small square, I'll never know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Look, he, he he's perfectly... Traditionally, players would only a left foot played out there because they could, didn't have the right. He's a huge man. Play him right on the, in the middle of the goals. And if you have to sacrifice Paul Guinea, who's not playing well at all and hasn't played well in a couple of years, sacrifice him. Play Clifford in there, right in the middle of the goals. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a fair point. Um, and I think, to be honest, he probably has liberty to go wherever. Yeah, true. Wherever he wants to go to get on the ball. So, 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 so it's probably up to him. And maybe he likes playing out there. Maybe he likes coming in on the left foot. That's obviously his favourite his favorite shot of slinging it over with the left foot. But... Uh, Look, he was exceptional yesterday again. Like, there's no like, like sometimes for me, he needs to be a little bit more patient. Maybe stay in close to the goal. Um, like when he comes out, if you're a if you're a defender marking him and you see him heading out towards a half forward, out towards midfield, you're happy enough to have him out there rather than close to the goal. But look, it's hard to fault him yesterday. He 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 put a huge effort in and and and, and kicked some fantastic scores. His only only blot in the copybook maybe was the was a solo that he gave away before the first Tyrone goal it was, uh, it was very uncharacteristic but he was, he was exceptional again Yeah he definitely was Colin what do you think like I mean his point from David De- Niall Morgan kicked away a ball a free kick straight to David Moran who took the free quick and Clifford got probably his only one that was in front of the goals and he was able to turn and sw- sling it over from the top of the D I just like to see him getting, gathering more balls in that position yeah, like he, he's remarkable when you get him in that position because, like, one of, one of the points stood out for me was the one uh, he got it and he just took one half a step back and McNamee was right there on him, yeah, ready to block and he just just swung it over over like and he, for, he look, he, there's no doubt he had a, he had a, he had a fantastic game and it's just it was actually a shame, no, not from a throne point of view, but it was a shame to see him get off from a neutral's point of view and because like he was he was he was really he was flying and he was you know after about 15, 20 minutes I was hoping. Like I think Ron McNamee needed more help. I was going, lads, whether we have to switch somebody on to him here, or we need to get make get, you know, probably Tyrone would have worked on that in the, you know, before the game and how we want to stop him in terms of making sure to get double up on him as soon as he gets the ball and whatnot. It did happen the odd time, but like the, he was just kicking points for fun. He, he doesn't miss like anytime he gets the ball. It's just a he, he can shoot under serious pressure, and uh, that that's probably the, the the key thing for me for him. Like it. Throne never let him away really with any sort of handy scores. It was always a man nipping at his heels, or yeah, he, he's very, very hard to mark. Uh, and lucky he, he had a fantastic performance. I say Alan talked about the one mistake he made. Um, and again, that, that can just happen for uh, in, in a game, but um, say it was just disappointing to see him going off and and uh, you know, not finish out the not finish out the day. And I know, I know a lot of ones up our, our way were sort of glad to see him cramp up and and, and get that uh. You know that, that, but look, uh, stood out, um, stood out that night from a from a carry perspective. Like he was, was head and shoulders for me above anybody else. Yeah, and especially like I mean, when you look at it, out of the seventeen points they scored in normal time, Sean O'Shea and Clifford scored fifteen of them. Like I mean, Sean O'Shea didn't play well. Geeney was awful. Sean O'Brien was poor. Stephen O'Brien was poor. Uh, Minahan awful. Spillan awful when he came on. Sean O'Shea and Paddy Clifford, you'd say they tried hard, but they weren't at the race. Like really only one forward kind of uh, performing and it was Clifford despite all the pressure um, that's on him. Peter Hart, I think, deserves a mention. I've criticised Peter Hart on the show here before that probably doesn't do it in the big games when Tyrone need him and that was in the forwards. And in, in his defence, it was always in a system that didn't really allow forwards play all that well. He was going to be, you know, double marked or maybe playing two against four on the other end. So it was difficult on him. Like the big plays in that game, he kept Stephen O'Brien scoreless. He scored a great point in the first half. He worked the goal. He could have been greedy and took his other two points. Two for me now from wing back. I'm great. He waited until allowed Sludden make his run and gave it to him. And he made that brilliant block at the end. Just for those three things alone, he deserves it. But was in the play, you know, and an all action wing back yeah, performance. He he's, a, he's an exceptional footballer and has been for Toronto for, for a long non- number of years. And I think his... Like to be fair, his spirit in general epitomised everything that was good about Tyrone yesterday, and 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 like you know, you're going to get that from him every day he goes out, and um, like his block was exceptional as well. His his ability to take a score was brilliant, and then he snuffs out Stephen O'Brien, so a brilliant performance again, and 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 but he's been so consistent for Tyrone over the years, and um, he's a really really important part of that team. Consistent in the big games, Colm. Obviously, very good at the weekend, but would that be a fair criticism? He, he has been like 
and Pity won't mind me saying this, like he, he has in the big day been marked out of it. You've seen John Small taking him out of it in the years come by. There's other lads that have been, I remember Dan Monaghan and like Darren Hughes marked him one day, one year. And just, you know, again, he got that special attention and I don't think he dealt with it really well. I think he struggled whenever he got that, a bit like what Myler done the Polly Clifford the weekend where someone was just set out here, take out Pity Hart. And he, he did, he, there was games over the last number of years where, he wasn't in it, and there was a lot of people up in Thrown were were giving off that he, you know, he couldn't do it in the big day. But fast forward to to, to to this year, that, and I think the management have recognised that that he's actually going to get a lot more space and time to play from you know playing in the defence. And he, he's a really good tackler. He's a very very brainy footballer, and he, people call him the ginger Messi up here. He he, he, <laughs> he very rarely loses the ball. He's just that he's that close close with it. Like he. He made a very, very impactful game. You know, obviously the block and the, and the setup for the goal. He, he really made an impact at the weekend. And look, I, I'm delighted for him to, to see that happening because he has had a fair bit of criticism over the, over the last number of years in the big games. But the management, and again, back to the management piece where they've really recognised how are we going to get the most out of Petey, Petey Hart. And that is, in, you know, in that defence where he's coming, say, so comfortable in the ball, coming out the pitch. And, you know, that that, that's, that for me has been a been a masterstroke. I think he, he's really found a new lease of life back there. Yeah. Carl McShane won three. Uh, lost his first ball. It was Jason Foley tapped it away. And I was like, ooh, you know, because he, he had been similar kind of nervous displays when he came on against Donegal and against uh, Monaghan as well. Like, I mean, he scored one three. Like, I mean, his contribution was match-winning, really. Like, uh, he was helped by, by poor Jason Foley cramping up. He wasn't even being marked for one, one or one of his points. The other was a breakaway that was an incredibly brave uh, ball that uh, Maddie Donnelly Maddie. won. He just dived at it. This was all or nothing stuff now. It was a ball that went across. A lot of players would almost go, ah, a bit risky there. If I don't make that, you know, I'm taken out of the game. He made it, won it. And that was an easy tap o- tap over point. The, the the great thing about Cottle McShane coming on is he puts they put Maddie Donnelly, who was having a nightmare in the forwards. He started playing really well out the field then. Yeah, and and there's probably a little bit of pressure on Cottle McShane coming in now. He's expected. He's he's kind of a bit like Kevin McMenon when he co- when he was coming into games with Dublin. He was expected to make a big impact, and that that carries a bit of pressure as well. You're coming into a close game, into full forward, and people are expecting you to get scores and to win ball in there. And to be fair to him, he delivered again for Tyrone yesterday. And like he's he's such a big man, he attracts so much attention. Um, he can finish, he can get goals. Like he's a he's a brilliant footballer, and 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 it's a good like the Tyrone management could have been under maybe a bit of pressure to put him back into the starting fifteen. Like he's been a big player for Tyrone for a number of years now, but they've held firm. They said no, we want you coming off the bench. And I'm sure that's a difficult conversation for 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 the management team to have with Kyle before games. Look, we're not going with you this week. This week again, we're going to bring you off the bench. But he's 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 delivered for them to be fair, and he can be he can be very happy with his performance yesterday. Yeah, for me, McShane starts and Donnelly plays in around the middle column. What do you think? It's a hard one because. It's working for Tyrone at the moment, and uh, sometimes when things are working, it's very, very yeah. hard to change it. And Tyrone are finishing pr- probably arguably with a stronger team than they're starting with at the moment. And you know that's like she, like Shane's coming into games. It's opened up, um, and he's obviously able to do for a bit of damage when he comes on. The difficulty is if you start him um, and you play Maddie back at the pitch is you know it does it weakens it does weaken your bench, no doubt. Um, and do they have the same? forward you know the same impactful forwards to come in and make a difference you know and when the game's in the melting pot i'm, I'm not sure so it, it is a it's a gutsy call by the management because there is there's a lot of people up here wondering why he's not starting and you know saying oh you need to get mcshane in and get such and such out or whatever it is but it's i, I think he's i think i think they'll not start him i don't think they will um i think they'll keep him in reserve and it is a difficult one for him because he's, he's obviously the the best player it's own had um, over the last number of years, you've been flying, and it, it, it's a tough one because if you know if Tron had a loss the weekend, they'd have been saying you had it should have started McShane, but yeah. it's working. Um, and he seems to have nearly he seems to nearly enjoy that role at the moment. To say it's not easy. Nobody wants to sit in the sub bench for any period of time in a game of football. But you're looking at what's greater, what the, what it is for the greater for the team and for, and for that group of players. And at the moment, you have to say that he is. You know, he's making a, a, a massive impact um, from the bench. So uh, I think they'll continue with that. I, I don't, in the final, I don't think they'll, I don't think they'll switch it up. Matty had a, probably a, 
I thought he worked it worked hard when he came out the field and done well, done really well. Um, inside it, he wasn't having much joy, but it, there was no thrown forward probably really. Like Darren McCurry was struggling as well, and again that was probably part and parcel from the kick. You know, the, the kick, the kicking game not working, and you know they were struggling man on man. So um, that, that could all change. Yeah, I would, I probably probably would keep it as, as is and, and leave McShane and, and bring him into the game. But I said back to the game at the weekend, it had, had, had a serious impact and. You know, one three from the bench, not bad. Yeah, have, have I, he kissed sec- the camera yeah. after as well. Did you see that? Did he like Stevie yeah. G? <laughs> like Stevie G <laughs> in Old Trafford, wasn't he? Kissed it? the camera. I'm glad, I'm glad I, think, I didn't see that. I think he thought it was. Um, I think he thought it was a roll of video camera, but it was actually just a, 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 a photographer. A photographer. Yeah. I never saw that. <laughs> Come here, does he's chew chewing gum? I don't think I've ever seen a player, uh, a Gaelic footballer, chewing chewing gum. He's chewing something when he comes on, Colin. Can you uh, confirm this for us? Does he chew chewing gum? I can never, I can't confirm or deny. I don't know. Uh, literally, I've never seen, I've never seen him do it. I've never, like none of the boys have ever said that he does it. So, uh, he was chewing something when he came in. Yeah, maybe the side of his tongue out of nerves or something. <laughs> I don't know. But he's chewing, he it looked like he was chewing something. It's very unusual. Uh, no, Normally sweets or something when you're coming in, people are throwing like fizzy sweets at you, maybe yeah, to get you yeah. going. But I, I, I've never known any player to have chewing gum or any of that sort of piece. Like I remember, uh, I, it was a lot of basketballers would do it, but unless he's taken, uh, he's taken a leaf out of the Arabic, but no, no <laughs> it's idea. it's actually unusual for a fella, um, Connor McKenna to score the two goals column and not be on performance of the weekend. But I don't think he deserves to be on it really in the gen- in general play. He wasn't really in it, um, but then again, he's the match winner. He scores two goals at that. Can't be taken off him. No, definitely not. Uh, I've had one hundred percent the same. Uh, you know, uh, I seen uh, I read the ratings actually uh, uh, yesterday, and he got like an eight or eight point five in a rating. I was sort of going, oh, okay, he scores two goals, but his, his open play wasn't the best. But look, McKenna has that bit of X factor about him, and there's absolutely no doubt. And that's you know what you want to get with him at times. He, he hasn't. He hasn't uh, continued as like last year. He came in, he was absolutely flying. He was he, he transformed her own last year, and this year he probably hasn't lived up that same expectation. But he is able to make differences in you know in the big games. Yeah, and, which is a thing. Like two goals, like and two well taken finishes. Yeah, like um, I'm not saying that you know he finished really really well on both occasions. So especially the first one, and you know he sort of went round and and and, and placed it in. So. Albeit okay, not 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 unbelievable from open play, but hey, he can make he can make that difference and the two goals for the difference in the game. And Alan talked about earlier if if Kerry gets their goal or Sean will get a few of their goals, Kerry probably won the game. So you have to give him massive credit because I think he like, and I say he's never going to be taken off. He, he, you just don't know he could be out of the game for 50, 55 minutes and then just explode and put one in the net. So to have that X factor, we haven't had that. I don't think with many of our players in the last number of years. So he. Uh, he does deserve huge credit for that. Picture the way things have gone in the modern game. That ball coming back from Jack Barry, which was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Conor McKenna gets the ball, fists it over the bar, three up. Jerry Canning says, huge point, took the right option. Great, three goal now. That'll, you know, I can picture that happening. He didn't even entertain it. He no. stuck it into the bottom corner of the net. And that is what you do in that situation. Yeah, that wasn't an easy finish. And the first one wasn't either. And to be fair, like I've... He like made being, the first one look easy, didn't he? Yeah, I've been in that situation in Ireland finding the goal chances don't come around that often and, and, and like like to finish the two of them the way he did were two exceptional finishes to be fair. He was quiet in like he was quiet in, 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 in the rest of the play, there's no doubt about it. But as I say, goals win matches, those goals won the matches and he got like he got two chances and he took them very, very well. Yeah. If you just to, it's just mad, if you were to tell Kerry before the game yesterday, Thomas Sullivan will clean out McCurry, Jason Foley will clean out Donnelly. Brian O'Beogley will keep uh, Conor McKenna completely quiet. You're going to destroy Niall Morgan's long kickouts t- and he's going to stick it out there 12 times. You know, like, I mean, there is no one in their right mind wouldn't have predicted yeah. a, a, a pretty comf- comfortable uh, Kerry win. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's, that's uh, like, as I said, I think Tyrone were happy to win it any way they had to win it, whether, whether they were kicking it, whether they had to run it, whether they had to get into a dogfight, whatever it was. And I yeah. think Kerry... They just wanted to play a little bit too much football and weren't really prepared for the dog fight. And um, like, like I think Tyrone probably deserved it, but it was harsh on Kerry. Some of the like, like Kerry be looking back this morning, they'd be kicking themselves this morning, looking at some of the mistakes they made, some of the very uncharacteristic mistakes, some of the opportunities they had that they didn't take, and um, some of their defending. Um, I, 
they're out of the championship which is a heavy price to pay for it definitely is last one is Porrick Hampsey um, captain's part uh, column I got this match up right. I think I got all the Tyrone matchups right actually last Thursday I'll have to listen back to them um, Sean O'Shea kept him to a point and really the longer the game went on the more Sean O'Shea kind of went out of it completely yeah, look, I actually thought Hamsey would have went to Clifford uh, when I was sort of doing ma- doing the matchups in my own head uh, before the weekend. But uh, I think the uh, I think the guys got that right. Paulie, look, a really really tough defender, uh, and look, he, he got up obviously the other end of the field, got kicked the point himself, and like Tyrone would have been fairly like obviously they've targeted O'Shea and targeted Clifford, um, and the guys don't like obviously uh, David Clifford had, a, had probably a fairly good game, but Paulie done a massive job on Sean O'Shea because he does create an awful lot for them he's you know he's very prolific and in terms of shooting and, and uh yeah it was a massive day for him you know for Tyrone to win the game they, they needed to nullify them guys as much as they could and uh, like you have to give massive credit I thought I'd be honest I thought Hampsey was fairly up there for uh alongside probably Myler and McGeary for man of the match I just think he I didn't see any influence from Sean O'Shea in the game, so uh, like a, a definitely a, a standout, a standout one, and one that um, I say he's probably had a Paddy's had a probably a rough couple of years in terms of a, since since eighteen or whatever. He's had a few injuries and whatnot, been in and out of the team, you know, just because of injury and that. So it's just great to see him back to his best from a own point of view because he's uh, he was definitely he's definitely a tough defender. Yeah, definitely. Other mentions, obviously, Connor Myler did a brilliant job. On um, Paddy Clifford, Thomas Sullivan, I thought was very good. And Kieran McGeary, I, I, he got a man of the match. Who did Sky? I think he got the RT man of the match. Who did Sky? I don't know who. Not sure who get, Sky gave. He got, he got both. I think he got both. Did he? I thought Gavin White caused too much problems. He was marking Gavin White, and Gavin White was uh, probably deserves a mention here as well. Who played very well going forward, Alan? I don't know if Kieran McGeary. I'd accept it. Was it his Donegal performance was outstanding, or his uh, his Monaghan performance? But look, you know what you get from McGeary. He dropped back. He gets on great work. He's as tenacious and brave and all those things. I just thought Gavin White caused too much damage for 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 him to be getting man of the match. Yeah, White was dangerous going forward. There's no doubt about it. That, like I think he went on a few runs. Maybe his end product wasn't great. Yeah, maybe someone, not enough think, came of it. Like just when you see McGeary coming out with it, like he is one of those sort of inspirational old school centre backs. He wants to hit everything that comes near him. He wants to solo the ball out. He wants to set up attacks. Um, so he has a huge, like he has, he's he's a little under the radar over the last, like over the last year or two, to be honest. But I think he's really come into his own this year. And and, and, and like I said, he's, He's like one of those old school centre backs, only a little bit of a little bit of a keep bar like that sort of. He, he obviously wears his heart on the sleeve, as we saw by his by his uh, his interview after the game. And um, like he's just one of those players that can that can rise a team with with whether it's a run out or a tackle or a hit or whatever. Yeah. And I think he played wing forward. Now he was playing wing forward. Play, yeah, yeah, he set up a lot of like he was dropping back. Dropping so he back set a up bit. a lot of attack coming out. Like he took a he transitioned a lot of ball out from a half back line into the into the forward line. Um, but as I said, he's just one of those players that looks, as I'm watching the game, he looks like an inspirational player to me. And I think a lot of the Tyrone players feed feed off that. Yeah, exactly. So performance of the weekend, I'm giving it to David Clifford, lads. I think that he was the, he was the outstanding player in the field. He was, Like, I mean, you look at the Tyrone uh, nominations, they're all in the backs. Maybe Cottle McShane, you'd say. Um, but David Clifford, lads, like, I mean, he was the best player in the field. I know they lost and he didn't even play extra time, but he was the best yeah, player in the field. Yeah, he was exceptional. Like, like like I think Kyle McShane coming in for me into a game like that and making the contribution he made in an All Ireland semi final like that is huge and 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 like the score one three coming off the bench I think is is a uh, yeah but the only like thing there is Jason Foley could hardly walk he was a still he has literally to had a free he literally he match. literally was playing full forward with no American. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be too harsh on him here. That's great. Oh, right, One thing for McShane, though, it's great for it his confidence. He needed that. He needed that performance, uh, McShane did, I think. Um, and he has it. I would be more of the lines of starting McShane. Yeah, but that's it. Uh, David Clifford. Uh, who would you have given it to, Colin? Uh, <laughs> I probably would have given it to Clifford uh, as well, to be honest. I, 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 but I'm, I want to be biased. I want to say a minor. Uh, but uh, like, to be fair, like, watching the game, Clifford was, was, was brilliant. Like, uh, yeah. I hate to say that, but yeah. 
Yeah, he definitely was. And who would have known what would have happened had he stayed on the field? Right, that's it. Congratulations to David Clifford, but mostly congratulations to Tyrone. Um, maybe there's a 2008 feel about them. I think there is a feel about them. Um, um, looking forward to previewing the final because it's probably a 50-50 uh, game. So we'll do that um, next week and we'll talk to you all then. Good luck. Yeah.